you are great yes you are holy one you walk upon the sea you raise the dead you reign in majesty mighty god hey, everything everything about you is great. You are great, yes, you are. Holy one. Oh, you walk upon the sea. You raise the dead. You reign in majesty. Mighty God. Hey, everything written about you is great. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. Depending on your time and your location, I hope you are all doing well by the grace of God. Hallelujah be to Jesus. Mr. Emmanuel Mori, I can see you. God bless you. Welcome. Brother Godwin, welcome. God bless you. God bless you, wherever you are connecting from. We are here to work on our salvation. We are here to work on our salvation. We are here to work on our salvation. So as soon as you join, you do well to share for me. Share and help me do the work of evangelist. Help me do the work of an evangelist. Help me to share, to reach people. <laughs> to reach people hallelujah spirit of the living god once again we have met i avail myself come and speak through me use me to teach your people let me teach them of your will of your counsel open their hearts open their mind to receive your word so that at the end they will not perish but have eternal life in christ jesus our lord amen hallelujah God bless you. God bless you once again. People keep asking, how do I gain salvation? How do I gain salvation? Can going to church alone make me enter paradise? Can going to church alone help me to get a better place to live after my death? Can paying my tithe alone help me get a better place to live after death? Doing charity alone, can it help me get a better place to live after death? There are many questions that people keep asking themselves. People keep asking themselves, how will I gain salvation? How do I gain salvation? Prophetess, charity, welcome. All the way from Zambia, God bless you. God bless you, Emmanuel. Uh, Ajare, God bless you. Keep sharing and invite them. Keep sharing and invite them. Hallelujah. Many people think as soon as they change their clothing, their physical appearance, and they begin to put on long guns and long hair gear, they think that they, they, they've qualified to enter into the narrow gate. Many people are being branded. Many people, they don't know how. They will even gain salvation. Many people do not know. They don't have knowledge. Others also believe that once saved is forever saved. So as soon as they get baptized and they lay hands on them, they, they, they impart them and they receive the gift of God, they think that is all. They start messing up. They start fornicating. They start doing all kinds of things, thinking they can gain salvation because their salvation is already guaranteed. Guaranteed. Brother Nunu, God bless you. How is Madam Charity and my princess, Zipora? God bless you all. Oh, Eva, God bless you. Salvation, you have to work on it on daily basis. On daily basis until your last breath, you have to work on your salvation. Evangelist, upon God bless you. On daily basis, when you wake up, you have to put things in order. As you wake up every day and clean your home, clean your bathroom, clean your kitchen, arrange your things, the same thing applies to your spiritual life. When you wake up, put things in order. Put things in order. Hallelujah. Uh, Francina, God bless you. Take your Bible and go with me to the book of Ephesians chapter number 4. 
Today we are going to use only two Bible verses. Two. Ephesians chapter 4 verses number 17 to the end. Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 17 going. It said this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. You therefore walk not as the Gentiles have been walking. This is Apostle Paul speaking to the church in Ephesus. He said, walk not like how the Gentiles have been walking. I want to pause and ask you, who are the Gentiles? What are the deeds of the Gentiles that we are not supposed to walk as they are walking? We are not supposed to do the deeds of these Gentiles. Hallelujah. The Gentiles, they only believe that, oh, the Father, we are Gentiles, we, are, we, we, we will not gain salvation. We don't have anything to do with the God of Abraham. They are the Gentiles. They don't have any connection with the God of Abraham. They don't, they don't want to even believe the commandment that Moses gave to them because they believe this commandment is for Israel, not for we, the Gentiles. It is not for we, the Gentiles. So when you go to Leviticus chapter 18, let me just put my hand here. I will come back to this scripture. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 18. God through Moses also gave that command. God through Moses also gave the Israels a command. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Leviticus chapter 18 verse 1 going. It says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, where ye dwelled, shall ye not do. The people that you live with them, which are the Egypt, the Egyptians, the deeds of the Egyptian do not do. The deeds of the Egyptian do not do. So when you come to Christ, there are the deeds of the world you need to reject. Until you reject the deeds of the world, you can never gain salvation. That is what you we, we, we talk about putting away the old man and the deeds. Putting away who you used to be. How people used to know you when you were in the world. Now you have accepted Jesus Christ. You are born again. You are a new creature. Because the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 says when somebody is in Christ, that person is a new creature. It said, behold, all the old things are past and everything is new. Ask yourself, are you carrying the new garment or you are still in the old garment? These are the days. Moses spoke to the people that the deeds, the doings of the Egypt do not take part. Do not do it. What were they doing? Many of them sleep with their own children. Many sleep with their own father's wife. Many sleep with their own mother's husband. These were the doings of the Egyptian. So they were not supposed to, to inherit it. They were not supposed to partake. Lead that life. But rather, live a life for Christ. Hallelujah. Or live for God. Obey the commandment that God has given to them. So Apostle Paul also spoke to the church in Ephesus. He told them, the deeds of the Gentiles, no way. The deeds of the Gentiles, no. Many people are in churches today. They don't obey the commandment of God, yet they are waiting for rapture. Many go to church today. Stop fornicating. Say, ah, ah, I have to date. Do not fornicate. You say, ah, if I don't taste it, how will I know that this is good for me? Don't do this. They say, ah, the, the Bible says we should drink, but we shouldn't do this. They will quote it. The deeds of the Gentiles. Run away. The deeds of the Gentiles. Run away. Come back to Ephesians. Come back to Ephesians. Chapter number 4, where we started. Ephesians 4, verse 17 going. Say, this I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the, the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Because of the blindness 
many of them, their mind and their brain, their, their heart has been taken over. They are, they are blind. They go naked, they don't feel anything wrong with that. When they are stealing, they are in church. They don't know, they don't see, they don't see anything wrong with robbing. They do so many things and still feel that they are old, they are a child of God. When you say which people, which who, who are the people that will gain salvation, they are the first person to lift up their hands. They are the first person to rise up their hands because they, their heart is being branded, their mind is being branded. Their, their heart is being taken over by vanity. By vanity. They don't, see, they don't have anything wrong. They can't differentiate between wrong and good. They cannot differentiate between what? Wrong and good. Somebody may ask, how do I even know? That what I'm doing is wrong. You can never know what you are doing is wrong or bad unless you, you just align it to the word of God. When you study the word of God, there you know what God doesn't want. And you know the things God wants and the things he doesn't want. The things he has warned you to stay away. Let us proceed. Verse number 19 says, Who, having, who been past feeling have given themselves unto lasciviousness to work all on greediness and greediness on greediness and greediness lasciviousness these three things on greediness and now many pastors many priests roman catholic priests they are gays many roman catholic priests they are gays many doctors they are gays Many nurses, they are lesbian. Why? The spirit of, 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 of uncleanliness have entered them. So these people will never let you know that even sleeping around with animals, they will never let you know it is evil. Many people, they are in Christ. They go to church all right. Today I'm not here about the, those that don't, don't go to church. Those in churches. People that goes to church, that dress every morning, every Sunday, go to church with their Bibles, but do not know the truth. You are the reason why I came. Because you are on the way to, you, you, are, you, are, you want to enter through the narrow gate. So we have to teach you how you can make it at the end. How you can make it. Giving yourself to lasciviousness will never make you make it. Giving yourself to greediness, greedy. You have everything. Yes, so the little that one person have, you want to take that one thing. In addition to all what you have, greediness, greediness. When we talk about old garment, greediness is part of it. Be so greedy. Everything you want it, anything in the world, you want only one person. You want to, you want to have everything unto yourself. You want to have everything unto yourself. That is why you see many people, they have everything. When you check their net worth, when you go into their account, the amount there, yes, so they are still killing people because they want to gain the whole world. They want to get the whole world money. They are doing all kinds of things. Many ladies, not that they don't have money to feed. They have money to feed. They have money in their bank account. They have their own job. They have their own businesses. Yes, so. They are sleeping around. They are not ready to settle down with one man. Because they think one man cannot care for them. One man is not enough. One man is not enough. Many people, yes. It is not enough. When we talk about the old man and it is. These are the things. When you come to Christ Jesus, let all these things be put away from you. Take away greediness. Take away lasciviousness. Take away anger. Take away bitterness. All these things are the things that blind people from the truth. All these things are things that, that brought people from gaining salvation. God cannot hear your prayer when these things are crowded you. When you are filled with lasciviousness. When you are filled with anger. When you are filled with bitterness. When you can't let it go. When you are not content. When you are not content with the little you have. When you are not content with what God has blessed you. We can't get the whole world within a day. 
You can't gain the whole world within a day. We work gradually, gradually to earn it. Every month, every year, every day, the job you do, the little you receive, every day, you know, gradually, gradually, you can't use a day to build a nation. You can't use a day to build a state. So gradually, gradually, work towards it. Work towards it. Many of you, you, you visit so many places and they give you options. That when you are able to slaughter, when you kill a pregnant woman, we are going to put this amount, they assure you, and it influences you. It influences you. From the young to the old, they are being influenced by what is happening around us. They are being influenced by what is happening around us. Young ladies, because of greediness, see people's husband, some of them even their father's age. Some of you, because of greediness, greediness, because you want to get money to change your clothing as you see people changing their clothing on daily basis on the media. You want to get money to look attractive. You want to get money to wear beautiful clothing and every shoes that comes on, every latest shoe, every latest bag, every latest thing, you want to get money to buy. So see what you are doing in your secret place. See what you are doing. Does it please God? Does it please God? Does it please God? Contentment. Godliness with contentment is a great gain. Be content with the little you have. If you can get money to buy only this one, my dear, serve God with it. Serve God with it. If you can get money to buy only one shoe, be content. That is what you have. She was not in a race with anybody. She was not in competition with anybody. My men, do not be influenced and be enticed by what people are doing around. Many of you, you are thinking of sacrificing your, your daughters. Many of you are thinking of sacrificing your sons because you want to ride the car. When you take a passenger car, or you take the train, or you take you travel by public transport, you all reach your destination. When you go by public transport, and somebody goes by Bentley, or Rolls, or Ferrari, you all reach your destination. Do not rush in life. Don't rush and don't be influenced. Don't sell out. Don't trade your salvation for a peanut. Don't trade your salvation for something that does not last long. Do not trade your salvation. My men, many of you are easily being convinced. Many of you are busy asking those praying money in, in, in street. Those spend money, you are busy drawing closer to them because you want them to show you the secret, show you how they manage to sacrifice to get those money. My dear, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What will it profit you when you get all the luxury cars and you die today and you, you are not able to make it? What will it profit you? Just fame? Are you doing it because of fame? Are you doing it because you want to entice people? Are you doing it because you want to get the name? Good name is better than riches. Good name is better than good ointment or perfume or incense. Get a good name. You can earn that good name by petty, petty things that you do. It's not about you getting the whole world. It's not about you getting the whole money. No. Now see our teenagers. Many are into robbery because they need the money. See our youth. The men, what they are doing. The women, what they are doing. It doesn't please God. It doesn't please God. Young and handsome, outstanding men are entering into game because they have heard that when you marry a gay partner, when you enter into gay, you will not work, you enjoy money. My dear, you will not work, you enjoy money, but your annuals will suffer. Your annuals will suffer, that is the real truth. Your annuals will suffer. 
It is better you do. You do your messy. You do your carpentry work. To get money to eat. Rather than somebody sponsoring you to be a gay. Sponsoring you to be a lesbian. One of my friends. She was called Linda. I knew her since 2000, 2007. She was my best friend. We used to dare to gather those days when we used to go go and look for a fiancé. We go, we, we, I had my fiancé. She also had her fiancé. Along the line, L Linda was being, she, she was being deceived by her gay, a, a lesbian partner. By her lesbian partner. A lady came from nowhere with rasta on her head. Even me, I thought it was best friend. And this lady came and fight me. Because she doesn't want me to move with my that my friend again. I never knew they were they were married. They were married as lesbians underground. I didn't know. So one day I was going to my friend's room. I went and met them doing it. I met them red handed. I didn't knock because I used to go to my friend's room. I don't knock. She wants to come to my room. She don't knock. So I just went and caught them rare handed and I tend to be an enemy to this lady. An enemy. She don't want to see my face. And I too, I hated her. I hate her for that thing. So I always draw closer to that my friend. I tell her what you are doing. You regret later. So oh, forget. I'm enjoying money. And you know, they use money to influence them. She used to buy beautiful clothing. She used to buy every latest thing that comes online. Yes, everything. She bought a car for her. This is my poor friend that we were struggling. That we even dead for men. We dated with men before we get money to feed. Because we didn't know how to work. Nobody taught us that we should work to get money. So our, our, our mind was being, we were being brainwashed. So we used to have fiancé to get money to feed. And I saw this, my friend, riding a car. And, you know, she moved from my class because I was poor and she now joined the richest group. So I wasn't her mate. Let me tell you at the end. The lady just flew her to South Africa. That was where they went for their honeymoon. They went to South Africa for their honeymoon. After two years, I didn't see this, my friend, again. One day, I was on the media. I saw a program on one of the FM stations in Ghana. This, my friend, has run. And when she came, she came with complications. She can't sit without wearing panty liner. That her, 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 her partner took her to South Africa and she said she gave her into many lesbian partners. People come, strangers come to have sexual intercourse with her. They exchange partners. They exchange partners. They exchange. When they sleep with this one, after two months, they will, they will exchange. They will give you into another person and they will take that person's partner. This is what they were doing. And this, my friend, ran to Ghana empty-handed. Empty-handed. She didn't come with any car. She didn't come with anything. She ran away because she can't sit. She said, when I sit for one hour and I, go, I don't go and change my, my diaper or my panty liner, all my clothing will wet. All my clothing will wet. Many of you, when we speak to you, we know what we are saying, you know. We know what we are saying. All the time they have been reporting us for them to delete our page. It is because we are teaching you the truth. We are telling you. They will not tell you. They will only show you the money. They will not tell you a time will come. Your honor will destroy it. We were all in Ghana. When a young man in University of Ghana. This young man said he was finding it difficult to get money to pay his school fees. And because of that he met a doctor. And the doctor said, you look so handsome. A very fair, handsome man. Young man. You look so handsome. I will take you as my biological son and I'm going to care for you. I will pay all your school fees. I will provide for you. I will do everything that you want. Not knowing this doctor is a gay. 
That is enticing this young man to draw closer to him so that he will get access to, to manipulate and do all his evil and wicked deeds to this young man. This young man didn't know. He said, oh, I thought I've gotten a dad. I moved from where I used to rent the house to go and stay with him in the house. His own house. He sponsored me. He paid my school fees. He gave me everything. But every night, more than five francs in my annals. More than five francs per night. Per night. Per night. And this young man was in his final year where he couldn't cope again. He can't sit on his own. His anal has been afflicted with anal cancer. It was all over the media. The doctor was arrested. Those in Ghana, you remember this? It was all over. Do not be enticed by the money that they will introduce to you. Be concerned about your salvation. Be much concerned about your salvation. I know many ladies that because of what they are using to entice you, you are in prostitution. Prostitution, sleeping with five men a day, sleeping with 15 men a day. My dear, you are beautiful, but let me tell you, you can't escape chlamydia. You can't escape HIV AIDS. You can't escape hepatitis B. When you get these three things, when you get these three things, for candidiasis, you can cure it. But these three things, my dear, it is a punishment from God. It is punishment from God. If you sleep around with 15 men, 10 men, 20 men, God is going to punish you with one of these diseases. That is the, the, the disease of Egypt in the Bible. That God said, if you hearken to me and you listen to my voice, I will not send the disease of Egypt unto you. So if you don't hearken to God and you begin to sleep around because rich men will give you money, because CEOs will give you money, you get HIV as you come and be. You hide yourself. A time will come you don't even want people to see you. A time will come you that is a public person, you that is all over everywhere, people will draw closer to you and you run away. You start the associating yourself. You start the associating yourself. My dear, salvation is personal. Work towards your salvation. Don't let anybody use money to entice you. If I, that time, used to follow down my best friend to enter into lesbianism, will I be who I am today? Will I be who I am today? No. But now I'm still battling that thing. I'm still fighting that disease. I'm still fighting that sickness. Many ladies who just one night says, just one night says, you've gotten HIV AIDS. And now your life, everything is messed up. Everything is messed up. You've shortened your destiny. You've shortened your life. Let me share my personal experience. What enticed me and what threatened my life for me to stop dating. That was the year 2008. Early February, I think March, March. One day I was in a car. I dressed up. I was in a car visiting my fiancé's house. I was in a car visiting my fiancé. When I was in the car, I heard the voice of God speaking to me. Get back or else you get HIV AIDS and it shorten your life. It was clear. Get, get back. Like, get back. And this fancy was somebody that I have just met. That was my first day of visiting that man. That was my first day that I said to myself, Oh, I'm coming to your, 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 your end that night. And I was in the car. I heard the voice clearly speaking to me. So I stopped the car and I said, Let me get down. I'm not going again. I came home. And how the voice really threatened me. I said, I'm not going to be in any relationship again. Because I don't know where I will get that HIV is. I don't know where, who that person will be. Who that man will be. Who the devil will send. And I thank God for this. I wouldn't know where my life will be by now. I wouldn't know how I'm going to survive by now. 
Because I'm not going to get the energy to work to care for myself. And no man will come to me why I am HIV positive. So how am I going to survive? It's either I take my life or I just end my life. You don't know what your future is. You don't know how God wants your life to be. Maybe you are struggling for today. Maybe you and your family, you are struggling to eat today. You are struggling to wear today. You are struggling to pay your bills. My dear, trust God. Trust God, the plans of God towards your life. He said, I know the thought that I think towards you. It is thought of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Your end matters, so your beginning may be so good, but the end. When we started life, I always use my life, what I have been through, to speak to you. Because at least I have some experience in life. I was, I you know, where I came from, from a ghetto. When you talk about ghetto girls, ghetto girls, the radicals. I am from the radical group. So when I sit to speak to you about life experience, my dear, I entered in age 16. Age 16, I started joining those ghetto guys, ghetto boys. Those that smoke, those that mess up, those that do all kinds of things. So I have life experience to use for you. And I know it is going to help you. You don't know what tomorrow holds for you. You don't know. You don't know. There are many people that when we started life with, they were rich. They were from a rich background. When they come to school, they, they, their fathers write them to bring them. They don't take public transport to come to school. They don't even board the school bus. They don't board a train to come to school. They come with their father's luxury car. Their father's or sometimes their mom will drive them in. Those days, they eat and they give us the, the, the leftover for us to use to, to quench our hunger. As I'm speaking to you, many of them are down. Now they call some of us for help. You don't know what tomorrow holds for you. You don't know the plans of God concerning your future. Many are rich now. But remember, the Bible said those that are in front will come back. And those that are at the back will come front. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Don't rush in life. Don't be influenced. Work on your salvation. Work on your salvation. Endure. You may go through hardship. Difficulties in getting money to pay your bills. Don't join Illuminati. Don't join Freemason. Do not go and join sisterhood. Do not go and join brotherhood. Do not go and join lesbians. Do not go and join gays. Do not turn from a man to a woman. Don't turn from a woman to a man. Transgender. You were not born transgender. It is the devil deceiving you. You were not born a gay. It is the evil spirit deceiving you. You were not born a lesbian. It is the demons that have taken over your mind. And they are deceiving you. Remember John 10, 10. The devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And when you decide that I will not be in the side of God, I will be in the world, God will leave you. God will leave you. Romans chapter 1, verses number 24 going. Mm. Romans chapter 1, verses number 24 going. If you decide that I will not serve God, I want to be a gay, God will not fight you because you want to be a gay. God will not fight you because you want to be a transgender. You want to move from a man to a woman. God will not fight you. He will not fight you. Romans chapter 1 verse 24 going say, Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. If you decide that I want to be a gay, God will not fight you. He will, he will let you go. He will let you go. But when he put the plague of Egypt on you, you run to him, he will turn his back at you. When he put the, the plague of Egypt the infection of Egypt, the infection that he used to torment the Egyptians. You remember, you remember. God will allow you be your gay, be your lesbian, 
be whatever you do. But he said, Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is present forever. Amen. Verse 26. It says, For this cause, God gave them up unto vain affection. For even their own women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Women change their natural use. Woman is supposed to be with a man. It is man and a woman. It is not woman and a woman. It is error. It is not woman and woman. It is error. Then the Bible spoke of it. This is apostle. The apostles, during their time, gay was there. During their time, lesbian was there. Lesbian didn't start to do. It started from Sodom and Gomorrah. The time of Abraham. The time of Abraham is a demon, it's a spirit that has been entering people from generation to generation. It has been entering people from generation to generation, just destroying souls, just destroying souls. Just... They were lesbians, they were gays, they were gay, so it didn't start to do. Lesbian is not something new. L L L G B T Q Q Q I now now they are even multiplying. It started, it started for a long time. Don't allow yourself for them to use you. Don't allow that spirit to enter you. Don't allow that evil spirit to enter you. God will deliver you into the hand of the spirit of lust. The spirit of lust. God will just leave you into the hand of spirit of uncleanliness, uncleanliness. That is why you see human beings behaving like animals. You see women behaving like animals. When you go and meet them, when they are having intimacy, see you see how they struggled? Many of you have not seen with your eye. You have not seen. When you go and stand there, see how they are sweating. See how they are struggling. The spirit of lust have taken over. It has taken over. Many of them, after that, they have to go and sit. Many ladies, they have to go for treatment. They have to go for treatment. The pains. Some of them are with infections. Some of them are with infections. You see them riding in cars. Go under their panties and see what is happening there. You are being enticed because they are riding luxury cars. Go under their panties and see the number of panty liners that is there. Go and see. The apostle said, for, for this cause, God gave them up unto veil affection. For even their women did change their natural use into which, into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, bent in their last one towards another. Men with men, working that Working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was met. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over unto a probate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, wish, uh, wish, wish Paris, all these things, when you allow this power of uncleanness to take over, murder will come into your mind. Many lesbians, when you approach them and tell them repent, wherever you are physically, they will attack you and come and kill you. Many gays, when you approach them and tell them repent, wherever you are, they will set a gang for you. Let me tell you the truth. Let me tell you the truth. They will set a gang for you. They are murderers because they don't care. They know they are, they are manhood that they are entering into your honor. You will not last long. You will die. Yes, so they will do it and kill you. They are murderers. When that spirit enters them, it makes them murderous. It makes them so bitter and so wicked. That is why the apostle was talking about it. Do not allow this spirit to take over your life. Fight for your salvation. Live righteous life.
Invite the Holy Spirit into your life. Pray for your children. If you see your child entering into this lesbian, my dear, don't say they will bring money home. So you are leaving them. You see them shining, beautiful, looking beautiful. I say, go under their panties. Go under their bossashos. Go and see their anna, that, that entrance. Go and see what is happening there. Go and see. Just go. Have a see. Have a look at what is entering in their anna. Go and see. Infections. 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 They will take you for treatment. As soon as they meet you, they will put earring in your nostril. Signify that you are engaged. You see many gays with many lesbians engaged with this earring in their nostril. It's a sign that they are being engaged. Yes, they have a partner. Just like they are not married. They don't put ring. Oh. They don't put you see them with an earring in their nostril. You know that earring. In their nostril. Repent, oh, my dear. You don't know when you will die. Don't let the beauty of this world deceive you. Don't let pressures of this world deceive you. You end up and you regret. We are preaching to you. We are speaking to you. We are advising you on daily basis. Draw closer to God. Run away from anything that deals with lust. Lust will destroy you. Lust will bury you alive. Lust will make you die. Premature death. Seek your creator in the days of your youth. Draw closer to God. Don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let anybody entice you with money. Don't let anybody, whatever it is, whatever it is, today that you are poor, tomorrow you'll be rich. Today that things are difficult, tomorrow will be all right. It is difficult today, tomorrow will not be the same like today. Keep working. Keep working and support all your hustle with prayers. You break through. Support, work hard. Work hard and support all your hustle with prayers. Start from somewhere. If you don't start from one, you will not reach ten. Start something. Even if it is bread that you bake and sell and get money to eat, my dear, bake that bread and sell and get money to eat. Even if it is sweet candy that you make and sell and get money, my dear, make it. Get money. If you don't ride car, that doesn't mean you are no human being. We are the reason why taxi drivers and truck drivers, they feed. We are the reason why public transport, the government have been getting money to sponsor the nation. If you don't take public transport to pay our, our, our fare to the, to the government, how and where would the government get money to build a nation? If all of us are supposed to be car owners, who will take the taxi? How is the taxi driver going to feed the family? If all of us is supposed to be a landlord, holding our own keys to our own house, who is going to rent whose house? And how are people going to eat? How are they going to feed? God is a wise God. He makes things at the right time. Don't, don't rush in life. Do not rush in life. Don't go and join any secret society because of money. Many of the, uh, many of these people, let me tell you, all uh, many of the, the things that they've been, they've been uh, exhibiting to entice you, many of them, even they go and rent it all. They go and rent it. Many of these people that have joined those billionaire scrub, many of these things that they, you see on the media that is deceiving you, many of them, it is not real. It's not even they go and rent it. You see a young man go and rent a car and you'll be standing, taking pictures, riding with friends and you think it is his own. Go closer to him. See where he lives. Not all greatest are gold, though. Not all the things that you see on the media that, that must push you, that must move you. No. The media is a means that the devil is using to deceive many youths. Fake life everywhere. Fake life. They are just buying pressure for the youth, especially the celebrities. Our celebrities, the devil is using them to promote the kingdom of mammon. They will exhibit so many things. So it will entice you for you to go for ritual money. 
to entice you for you to join secret groups. They are fake. All of them are fake. See the end of many celebrities. Me, many celebrities, when, they, when I see their aid and they are begging and even I have, I will never give to them. If they have their money and they will never support me, let them go. I will never give to them. Because I see them as people with that vision. I see them as people with that dreams. They don't dream. They don't have vision. Because life is full of ups and downs. Today may be good. Tomorrow you'll be down. Today you may be up. Tomorrow you may be down. So when you get money today, invest for tomorrow. Invest for tomorrow. Many of them, they tattoo on their body alone. It's 10 k dollars. Just tattoo that they have done on their body. It is 10k dollars. And when you broke, you want me to give the little that I got dead. You want me to give to you? No way. I'll give to the orphans. I'll give to the widows. I will never do that. I will never do that. Fake life everywhere. Don't be moved by distance. Work on your salvation. Invite the Holy Spirit into your life. Live righteous life. Praise God. Make sure everything that you are doing, you are praising God because you don't know when you faint and die. That is one word. One word. When you wake up in the morning and you are rushing to go to work, ask yourself, when I, as I'm going, if my car hit the pavement and I lose or I log out of my body, where will my soul be? When you are in a train, ask yourself, when I get an accident and I die, where will my soul be? Ask yourself, when you think of going to sleep with somebody's husband in the hotel, ask yourself, when the hotel building, when it catch fire, when there is a fire outbreak in the hotel, and I and that person's husband die in the course of the fire, or, or we lose our life, where is our soul going? Ask yourself this question. Before you dress to go and sleep with a man, in a stranger in a hotel room, a stranger you don't know anywhere, a stranger you just met on the media, and you are meeting the person first time, your family don't know his family, your family don't know anything about this stranger, and you, are, you, you agree to go and meet that stranger in the hotel. Ask yourself, when I go and he uses me for sacrifice, where will my soul be? Many prostitutes, they, are being, they use them for sacrifice. They use them. They use them. They enter into the hotel room. They come home. Uh, they, they are okay. And they faint and they die. They faint and they die. They use them for sacrifice. Many prostitutes draw closer to them. Prostitutes that have repented. Let them share to you your, their experience before you think of entering into prostitution. Before you sit, you sit to think of entering into prostitution, just get closer to somebody. Let the person give you experience. Let the person speak to you what he or she went through so that you, you decide whether you enter or you not enter. Don't let the beauty, the beautiful clothing that they, 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 they are wearing, don't let it entice you. Many young ladies, you've not given birth before. You have not given birth before. You've gone for breast implant. You've gone for liposuction to pull your fat from your belly to your booty. My dear, you regret tomorrow. You are going to regret tomorrow. If this thing doesn't rot to give you cancer in your booty, if it doesn't give you cancer in your back, my dear, a time is coming. You get infection. That is the truth. The world doesn't want us to spit. Because they think we are destroying somebody's work. They think it is somebody's job that he's doing to eat. How many of his families? How many of his sisters? Those doctors uh, doing that, that liposuction for you. Ask, has their wife gone through? Has their wife? Is their wife having that thing? Have they removed the fat from their, their wife's stomach and put it in their booty? Go and check their wife. They are natural as you are. They are natural because they know the complications. They know the implications. They know the side effect of that thing. Because they are doing it to gain money, to enrich their life, to enrich themselves. They will not tell you the consequences. They will not tell you the consequences. We speak to you. We are under attack because we are spitting the truth. And that is the real truth. We must speak it. Whether death or alive, we must pick the truth. 
Now we are in a dispensation, we are in an era that when you speak the truth, you'll be in trouble. You'll be in trouble. The truth, they want the truth to go down. They promote lies. They promote lies and they, and they, and they just pull down the truth. That is why many of us, you see our us, it's like our pages is under attack. Everything around us is under attack. This is a sign that we are doing good thing. This shows that we are doing good thing. Sometimes I come live, I finish, they block my video. I come live, as soon as I finish, my video is being broke. They restrict it for no reason. They will not give you any reason because it carries some sensitive words that will draw people back to their senses. So they don't want it. They don't want it. But you, that is be hearing it. Apply it. Use it for your life. My grandfather is 109. He'll get 110 years. This year, he's still alive. Now, 25-year people are dying. 50 years is dying. 30 years, gone too soon. 16, gone too soon. 25, gone too soon. This is what is happening. Because we are following what the world is exhibiting to us. We have left the creator. We've turned our back to the creator. We are being deceived by the world. We are being deceived. We follow what the world exhibits to us. And they don't exhibit the truth. They exhibit things that will rob our joy. They exhibit things that will destroy our future. That will kill our destiny. Things that will shorten your life. Nowadays, all the things that, that people are even producing are things that will shorten the life of men. Things that will shorten the life of men. Go and see thin tomatoes. Go and see what they are using to make tomato paste. The chemicals, they know these chemicals is harmful. It's toxic to our kidney. It's toxic to our lungs. Yes, they will, they will use this. They will use it and, and make it and gain money. Go and see. Things that they are producing for us to buy and eat. It is things that will kill us gradually, gradually. That is why we are dying prematurely. We are dying prematurely. Things that will destroy people. Things that will kill us. Things that will, that will make us enter our early grave. Those days, we used to eat organic. Now it is all can, 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 can. 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 Now, human beings have sat down to design chemicals just to kill, just to destroy land, just to destroy the land, just to destroy fertile lands. All these things, you know, you have to get to know that they don't want the well-being of human beings, so they want to eliminate human beings from the earth. So every day when you are there, it is only God that will help you. Draw closer to your creator. Draw closer to your creator. God Almighty, your creator, when you are closer to him, he will, he will preserve you. He will protect you. He will deliver you from all this, the hand of these wicked people. These wicked people. Now, people are busy. They put nails and they, they make as if it is a tablet, like a pill. When you take it into your body, there is a video one of one of our our people, one, one of our members sent to me, a video, and that video you can see a pill that they have put nails. <laughs> it is nails that is in the pill. It is nails that is in the pill. So as soon as you take these nails into you, I say, oh, I'm having rheumatism, I'm having arthritis, and doctors will prescribe that thing. You go and buy it with your money, and you come and swallow it, and within three, within one month, within two months, you go for checkup again. They will tell you your lungs is under attack, your kidney is 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 you're having kidney problem, you are having heart problem. All these people are wicked peoples. What they exhibit. To you as things that will kill you draw closer to god live with god let the blood of jesus be everything to you 
Let the blood of Jesus be your pill. Let the blood of Jesus be your vaccine. Let the blood of Jesus be everything. When you wake up in the morning, say, I soak my soul. I soak my children's soul. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover my children with the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover my home. I cover my business. I cover my investment with the blood of Jesus Christ. When you wake up in the morning, I cover my marriage with the blood of Jesus Christ. Because everything that is good around you, the devil is planning to tear it. The devil is planning to break it into pieces. Watching from Berlin, God bless you. Madam Elizabeth, God bless you. Uh, Sylvia, God bless you. Share the broadcast for me. Every good thing in the life of children of God, the devil wants to take it away from you. I shared a testimony to you where God took my spirit and I saw a very big car. It is full of goods. They've loaded goods in buses. And it's inside the car. And they've written the, the logo. The ratings on it was LGBTQ. That was the words that was written. And somebody told me, you know, all these things, all these goods in that cargo car. You know that cargo going? I say yes. He said, all these goods in the cargo, it belongs to children of God. They have robbed them. They have stolen from them. They have used lies to deceive them, to take what belongs to them so that they have to come and surrender. They have to come and join them before they enjoy it. But God gave to them freely. God gave to them freely. But they, the devil have taking it away from them, and they want them to come and join, come and surrender, come and bow to the God of Mammon, come and join to the God of Mammon. You know, when we talk about the God of Mammon, Jesus Christ said, you can't serve two masters, you can't serve me, and you can't serve Mammon. The God of Mammon is working through many people, it's working through fake pastors, it's working through fake apostles, it's working through fake bishops. It's working through individuals. It's using people, gaining people, as gain, get, uh, grabbing people through gay, uh, welcoming people through lesbian, welcoming people through transgender. You know, now when you agree to be a transgender, you even get somebody to sponsor you, to go through surgeries, to go through all kinds of things for you to change from a lady to a man. It is human being that will sponsor you. This should speak to you. This should tell you we are in the later days. We are in the end time. We are in the end time and you need to work on your salvation. You need to get prepared. You need to draw closer to God. You need not to, 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 be, to be moved by what is happening in the world. It is better you wear your one shoe. It is better you wear your one clothing and wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Do not bow to the God of Mammon. Do not bow. Yesterday I saw a, a post that somebody did on the media. A young boy, he was young, when he sang one of the one of the gospel songs, it went viral at that time. It went viral. And as I'm speaking to you, that child is a gay. That child have joined a gay in the United States of America. The influencer, the devil is busy winning souls. On daily basis, they are winning. They are winning. They are winning. They are winning. Stay away from anything that deals with us last. Last, when you start masturbating now, very soon, the devil introduce a gay or a lesbian partner to you to help you assist it. And they will push you in and they will just go and bring so no every day on daily basis. They are bringing so so they are using money. They are using money. Many of you that have been enticed by money. Many of you when you see money, you don't even pray to seek the face of God concerning that money that the person is offering you. That 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 offer. That offer. Oh, I'm giving you an offer. Oh. Oh, can I be your, 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 I want to take you as my child. I want to sponsor you. I want to take you abroad. I want you to finish your education. And as soon as you hear it, you not even seek the face of God. Lord, should I go or I shouldn't go? Is this offer from you? Should I accept it or I shouldn't accept it? Lord, are you going with me to this abroad that this person is taking me? Should I go seek the face of God in everything you do? Seek the knowledge of God. Seek the knowledge of God. Because if you don't seek the face of God and this person brings you from Africa to abroad, definitely you give your honors to that person. If that person brings you from Africa to abroad and at midnight he comes closer touching you, you can't say no because he brought you. 
He will just push you into lesbianism. He will just push you. That has become the order of the day. How they are using, how when God opened your eye to see young, young girls in our secondary schools, in universities, they've, they've taken over everywhere. Oh. They've taken over everywhere. Many of you, your daughters are lesbians, you don't know. Many of your sons are gays, you don't know. Junior high school, they are gay. Junior high school, they'll cross from school and they'll go to their friend to do it before they come home. Senior high school, those in boarding house, those in hostels, they are there during our time when we were in boarding house. There were so many of my mates that were lesbians. I didn't know that was what you call lesbian. At night, you see them. You are, you see with your eyes. Many of you pray for your children. Pray for your children. Don't let the devil take captive of them. The devil will steal them from you. And by the time they return, you see them with diverse tattoos. Diverse tattoos. Many of them, they even tattoo on their private part. Recently, I shared a video. It is sad, but it is funny. A lady that have gone naked and the man is tattooing her private part. And all of a sudden, because you know, tattoo is painful. Tattoo, it is painful. As those that have tattooed their body, they will tell you when they were doing it, it was painful. And this lady urinated onto the face of the person drawing the tattoo. What do women really need in health? What do we want? What is pushing you? Who have bewitched you that you don't want to liberate yourself? Who have bewitched you that you don't want to listen to the truth? Tattooing on your breast just to entice men. Tattooing on your private part, who will see? Only men. Only men. Only men. Those that went for liposuction and they started bearing the side effect. You see, after you go for that liposuction, the next thing is to go for the mark of the seal. The mark is the tattoo. That is why all those that have gone for liposuctions, you see tattoos all over their body. It is a sign, yo. When we talk about the mark of the beast, I say many of you will take it. You will take that mark. Many of you that are interested in tattoo, 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 tattoo. Children of God that have been enticed by tattoos, you will take it. Because it's a mark. And tattoo is a mark. Many of you have crocodile at your back, drawn at your back. Many of you have beasts tattooed on your womanhood. Listening to me right now. Many of you have images, strange images, demigods, spirits, angels, angels that you were told they were angels, not knowing they, you don't know whether they are angels of devil or they are angels of God. They are being tattooed at your back and you carry back and forth every day. That is the mark of the beast you have caught, you have taken. That is the mark of the beast you have taken. Many of you, it is tattooed on your leg. On your leg, tattoo is everybody will see. Tattoos on your hands, tattoos on your ankles, tattoos all over your body. The mark of the beast, you've already taken it because the mark of the beast is not vaccine. It is a mark. And tattoo is a mark. When you read the, the book of Genesis chapter 4, when God cares Cain, he put a tattoo, he put a mark, he placed a mark on his body that when everybody see him, he will see that this is the cares soul. God prays a tattoo. That is the origin of tattoo. So tattoos are on people that are under cursed. People that are accursed, they carry tattoo. People that are accursed by God, they carry tattoo. So you, that is not accursed. Why are you with tattoo? Why are you with tattoo? You, that is not accursed. Why are you with tattoo? Ask yourself, are you Cain? Have God cursed you? Have you killed somebody that God have God will place that mark on you? You have not. You don't know. Many of you, you are moved by what you see. The devil has been using many prayers, football prayers, to advertise whatever they bring on earth. The devil has been using many celebrities to advertise what they've been bringing on earth. The devil has been using many gospel singers so you know that they are oh this person how he sings it's a gift it's a gift it's a gift 
Three days today, I was telling you many of these gospel singers, even the song they sing, they are not the writers of that song. It was written by somebody somewhere. And they, they just gave to them for them to sing it. So when you see them singing, and you see them doing all kinds of things, don't say, they are, oh, this, you know, how he sings the gospel, how anointed he is. Even with tattoo, the Holy Spirit is still with him. How he sing? That song was written by somebody filled with the Holy Spirit underground. That is, that is not having a good voice to sing. That person don't have a voice to sing. And he have the gift of writing because the Holy Spirit is with him. And he has been writing for those your gospel singers to sing. That is why their life is different from the song they sing. They can live by the words because the words was not in them. It was written and given to them. It is, it is like they are actors of the word. They are, not, they are not doers. They are acting. So don't let what they are doing encourage you to go and do. Many gospel singers with tattoo. Many gospel singers with hair dye. They've dyed their hair. They've changed it from black to red, brown. Many of them from black to mauve. Many of them from black to red. It is all demonic ways. It is ways that the devil is using to bring souls. Be natural. God gave you a, a black hair. Use it. Use it. When your hair turns to gray, gray is a blessing. Gray is a blessing. When your hair is gray, do not go and use hair dye. Because you want to look young to sleep with young girls. Many of the men, that is what you are doing. Your hair is gray. God has blessed you with gray hair. Not everybody has been seeing gray in their age. People are dying 35. They didn't get access to have gray hair. People die in 15, age 15. They didn't get access to see gray hair. God has given you gray hair. As a sign that God loves you. As a sign that God has given you long life. And you are covering it. God will shorten your life because you don't need it. He's going to shorten your life. Many ladies, you are watching me right now. You've cut in your natural hair. You've cut it. Many of you, you have not cut it. You don't even have time for your natural hair. You are busy looking for artificial wigs. All different kinds of wigs. All weavons. All of it is on your head. When you die today and you visit God with that weavon, you, you, how are you going to account it? How are you going to say God? God will ask you, didn't I give you hair on your head? What is this thing that you are carrying? God will ask you, didn't I give you hair on your head? What is this thing that you are carrying? China hair, India hair. How many Chinese wear artificial hair? Ask yourself that question. How many Chinese wear artificial hair? Indian hair. How many of them have been wearing that hair that they've sacrificed to their goals? They, they, they have sacrificed that human hair to their goals and companies will go and buy it, mint it, and you will buy and put on your hair claiming you are first class lady. Claiming you are high class lady. A ghost hair, ghost, ghost hair on your head. Ghost hair. Ghost hair on your head. You don't know whether that person, that, that, that person you are carrying the hair you don't know whether that person was a witch doctor, a sangoma, a prostitute, a lesbian, a gay. You don't know who, whose hair you are carrying. You don't know. I just want to open your eye today. You don't know whose hair is that. Yesterday it is on your head. You go to church with it. You sleep with it. And you want your marriage to prosper. The demon in that hair is in between you and your husband. And you want peace in your marriage. You want peace in your marriage. Anytime you sleep, somebody has been sleeping with you because you carry the head. So he had access to you. He had access to your body. They will, uh, they will visit you every night and come and chop you and go. They will visit you. You will pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. That will not break until you throw it away. Until you throw it away. Jesus Christ made something. He made, he made, he said, he said something. He said that the ruler of this world it's coming to me, but he will not get anything from me. I think it is, um, I think John 11, verse number 34. I don't know. I'm not, I stand to be corrected. That right quotation. He said, the ruler of this earth, of this world is coming to me, but he will not get anything from me. 
Because I don't carry anything of him. Many of us, when the devil come, he can't get anything to say because of this thing on you. You are my daughter. No. He can't say we fornicate. Because you are fornicating, you don't belong to God. I have access to you. I don't fornicate. He can't say you've been stealing. I don't steal. He can't say you've been gossiping. I don't gossip. He can't say no. When he comes to you and he don't get anything from you, he will go empty handed. He will check you. He will check. He will analyze. He will analyze just from your head to your toe. Just from your head to your toe. You know the hair you are carrying is not your hair. It doesn't belong to you. You are carrying somebody's burden on your head. You are carrying a ghost. A ghost. A ghost. A ghost. A Chinese woman that died that they removed the hair. And companies went and, and buy it. You are calling it bone straight. Bone twisted. Bone this on your head in the body of Christ. And you call yourself a born again. You are waiting for rapture. When rapture occurs, do you think God will rapture you with that thing on your head? Ask yourself this question. If you want to gain salvation, ask yourself this question. Things that have been sacrificed to God. If you meet that have been sacrificed to God that you are using to satisfy yourself. Then you throw it away early in the morning. Just to eat it tonight and early in the morning it turns to waste and you bring it out. God said we shouldn't eat it. Meat, egg, that has been sacrificed to God. God said we shouldn't eat it. How much more hair that has been sacrificed to God? Some of you, you put this thing on three months. It is on your head. You don't wash it. You don't do anything to it. Every day you'll be spraying, 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 spraying. And you are smelling, stinking in the realms of the spot like a stinking fish. Physically, you go with spray, perfumes. <laughs> Every day, Every day, shh, begin to work with your natural hair. If you think you, you don't have hair, cut your hair. It is not an abomination for a woman to cut your hair. First Corinthians chapter 11. It said, if you don't want to cover your head, when praying, cut your hair. Cut it. If you think your natural hair is a burden to you, cut it. Cut it. It is not abomination. Read First Corinthians chapter 11. It is there. It is there. Stop carrying all these things. Be natural. Because you don't know when the rapture will occur. You don't know the day. You don't know the hour. You don't know the season. So prepare. Prepare. When you die today, no, I keep telling you, many people that, that have, many people die with this uh, twist, with this artificial things on their hair, and we have to remove it before we put them in their grave. We have to remove it. Before we bury them, why are you carrying all this burden on you? Why can't you try and let it go? Why can't you try and live for God? Why can't you try and let the world go? Deny the world and everything in it. Deny it. They are using to entice you. Many of you don't have money to buy raven. Because of that, you are dating. You are fornicating. Many of you, because of money to buy makeups. Makeups. Because of that, you are fornicating. If it's left with what you eat, the job you do can feed you. But money to buy luxury and flashy things. Because of that, you are dating five men. You are having two fiancé. You are all the time lying. You call this one and you lie. And you call this one and you lie. Heaven is real. Hell is real. You are just a stranger on earth. One day, one day born. One day, one day die. When you die today, where will your soul be? When you die today, where will your soul be? Where will you spend eternity? Have you gotten to know? Have you discovered where you spend eternity? Have you thought of that? Where you spend eternity? You can't buy money. You can't use money to buy eternity. You can't use money to buy a place for your soul to, stay, to, to live. Oh. You can use righteous life. Only righteous life. Holy life. Live holy. Live for God. Be proud of your own. Be content with your own. Don't be deceived. Don't be, don't be moved by what the celebrities are doing. Many of the celebrities, let me tell you, they can't move with their natural face like this. Oh. Their face are like chimpanzees. Monkeys, monkeys, even monkeys, they have a smooth face more than many of your celebrities. Makeups and all these things have made their face, have brought rushes. 
It has brought the, the wrath of Egypt on their face. When we talk about the disease of Egypt, God can afflict you in your anus. God can afflict you in your face. God can afflict you in your body. Have you to see people that have gone for tattoo that, that have turned to cancer? Have you not seen it? There was a video I saw on the media. A lady went and tattooed the breast and now she's having breast cancer. They've eliminated one of the breasts. They've caught one of the breasts. Now the cancer has transferred to the other side. God will punish you. God will torture you. When we speak to you, please, listen and listen well. Every day when I talk about people going around saying, we are holiness, we are holiness, they don't teach the truth of God. I'm angry with them because they don't teach the truth of God. People are hiding behind things that they need to let it go. People are with long gone. When you see me here now, I'm with long gone. I'm with my hair here. You think I'm holy, right? You see me as a holy mom, right? You see me, oh, mommy, she's, she's among the holiness. I'm not holy. Maybe I'm not holy. Maybe I'm not holy in the sight of God. Because only God knows what I'm doing. If I'm a witch, God knows. If I'm a witch, or, and you, you don't belong to the witchcraft group that I join, you will never know I'm a witch. That is why I keep saying, people shouldn't use the word holiness in vain. They shouldn't use the word holiness in vain because they see people with long gone. Many are with long gone, so bitter to the stand that just dare them and you see. Just offend them and you see. Just offend them. They are with long guns. I know many people with long guns. When I see them, what they are doing in the realms of the sport, I, I say, God, you, you, you know, you, you, you are so cool. If it is human being, I think that person, that person is going to strike them with tender. What they are doing in their secret place. Yes, so they go around condemning everybody. Now, righteousness have turned to be earring and jewelry. When the person is not with earring, not with jewelry, that person is a holy person. My dear, don't deceive yourself. Oh. This thing that we are talking about, this spirit of lust, this spirit of covetousness, this spirit of lasciviousness, greediness, hatred. If you don't work on it, my dear, if you don't work on it, You'll be left behind. Rapture will occur. God will tell you, depart from me. I know you not. Depart from me. That word that Jesus Christ used in the book of Matthew 7, 21. That he will tell many people, depart from me. I know you not. It is not worldly people. So it is people in Christ. People that we call ourselves Christians. He will tell many people, depart from me. I know you not. You wake up of iniquity. And you say, Lord, didn't I live righteousness? Lord, was I not the promoter of holiness? Lord, was I not the one preaching? You say, depart from me. I know you not. You wake up of iniquity. You that works for the devil. You that your heart is filled with veil, vain glory. You that do things just to please man. But you don't do things to please me. He will tell you, depart from me. People only see you as a pastor. But you are a charlatan. You are a demon in my presence. People see you as a prophetess. But you are a witchcraft person in my presence. I don't know you. Depart from me. I know you not. Work on your salvation. Work on your salvation. Work on your salvation. Just give your life to Christ. If you are here and you are not baptized, please from here, go to any pastor that you know. He's, he organized baptism. Baptism in river. Baptism in river. When you are in a nation that you don't have river, and they are doing, they are doing baptism in a pool, if in that pool, after they baptize one person, they should let the water flow. They should let the water flow because they have soaked the person. The sins of that person is in the water. So if it doesn't flow and they put another person and the person soak, they soak the person or they emerge the person in that water and the person come and he carries the sin of that, the person that went before him or her. That is the reason why many people baptize and get witchcraft in our days. This is the reason why many people after baptism, they get spoiled sleeping with them. When they, before they went for baptism, let me tell you the red truth. Before they went for baptism, 
Before, when they did, when they were, they, they haven't gone for that baptism, they were not having any spoiled husband sleeping with them. They were not having any spoiled wife sleeping with them. After the baptism that they discovered, that any time they sleep, something had been sleeping with them. In baptism, baptism that, that is being done in pool, many people get demons through that. Many people get evil, evil, evil spoiled through that. Go through baptism in water, in river. In river that is flowing. In river. In river. Let them baptize you. Do not go back to the world again. Or lift up your hand and say, Lord, dear Lord Jesus, if you want God to visit your life after you receive him, after you, you surrender everything, you say this word, that dear Lord Jesus, I believe the fact that you died for me. On the cross of Calvary, from today, come and be my Lord. From today, I accept you as my Savior who died for me. I accept you as my Savior who, who died for me. On the cross of Calvary, let me live by your word. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your power. Delete my name from the book of destruction. Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, somebody say, well, is that teaching in the Bible? Which of the teaching? <clears throat> Baptism, you know, many people, you are being baptized in, in, in pools, pool water, pool, pool, swimming pool. You see hundred people being dipped in one swimming pool. They don't allow the water to flow. They don't open the 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 the, the tube for the for the water to go, and they, they all people in one. It is not genuine way of baptism. I'll bring baptism teachings one day. Jesus Christ was baptized in River Jordan. He wasn't baptized in pool. All the apostles, the people they baptized, it was in water. Even if the nation that they are doing the baptism don't have water, they don't have any river there. Like this desert area, they don't have river and they are using pool. They should do it the right way. They should do it the right way. They should let the water flow as rivers have been flowing. Because when it flows, it takes away the person's sins. You soak the person in water. That person, meaning be that the person have died with Christ and he comes out. He emerged as a new creature. They soak a prostitute in the same water. The water is not flowing. They soak a gay, a lesbian. They emerge that person or baptize that person in that, in that same pool. And they put you. You are not a gay. You are not. You just put you and you come out. And you are filled with the spirit of lust. I know what I'm saying. You know? What I'm saying. It is people that have come to me for deliverance. People that have come to me for deliverance. Sometimes things that I say, many, many of you have not had that encounter, so you don't believe. It is hardly for you to believe until it start, you have a physical experience or a personal experience. But I pray that God will give you knowledge in God. You get knowledge about God. Knowledge about how to do things in the right way in Christ Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God willing, tonight we meet for prayers. We will meet for prayers tonight, tonight, 10.45 p.m. GMT, 10.45 p.m. GMT. God bless you. If you want to give us credit for our broadcast, if you want to buy credit, it's a question. It's a baptism is not a spiritual thing. Just want to know. No, baptism is physical. <coughs> baptism is physical. They have to imagine you. Jesus was baptized physically. Jesus was baptized physically. He was, he went to John the Baptist, the book of Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 3. Matthew 3, he was, John the Baptist just soak him in, he met him in the water. So just go through it, go through it, go through that baptism just once. And that is all, that is all. When you go through, one day I'll bring that teaching. You know, our time is gone, our time is gone, our time is gone. When we spend too much, when we, 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 we stream for long, it takes much of the data, it's not easy. It's not easy. So we, we will have another day to have teachings on baptism for you to work on your salvation 
everybody work on it if you have not shared the broadcast please share the broadcast if you have not shared a share to somebody somebody will listen and give the right life to christ god bless you cherry god bless you uh francina god bless you dada god bless you all those that have shared god bless you so much god bless you tonight eva god bless you we will meet tonight joyce i, I can see you god bless you um Deborah, God bless you. I have seen you. God bless you. Mama Nestina, you are there. God bless you. God bless you. Brother Simon, you are there. God bless you. God bless you so much. God bless you. God bless you. God willing, we will meet. We will meet uh, for Sylvia. I can see you. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. You know the ways of God. Uh, Madam Edith, you are there. Ijeoma, you are there. Gifty, you are there. God bless you. Extend my, my sincere greetings to your children for me. Oibo, God bless you so much. Ah, Kikilomi, God bless you. God bless you. Veronica, oh, you are all there. God bless you so much. Share the broadcast for me. Shalom. God bless you. Joyce, you are there. God bless you so much. God bless you all. God bless you. Sylvia, I've seen you. Uh, Victoria, I've seen you. God bless you. Um, Jobshia, God bless you. Edith, you are there. Uh, Christine, God bless you. God bless you all. God bless you. When you go to YouTube, I will upload the video there. When you go to YouTube, you can you can go and search Precious Appear Gifting Ministry. That is our page there. Precious Appear Gifting <coughs> Ministry on YouTube. On YouTube. Search our page and you get all our teachings over there. You get all our teachings. You get prayers. When you can't sleep, just go and click one of the prayers and pray. You are late. Uh, God bless you. God bless you, Matrida. God bless you. Julia, you are there. God bless you too. All of you, you are late. You can just rewatch it later. You can watch it later. <coughs> Asatu, Asatu. God bless you. I've seen you. Shalom. My number is plus two three three five four four nine four seven two seven three. Plus two three three five four four nine four seven two seven three. If you want to buy data for us, you can use send wave, you can use tap tap send, you can use word remit. Yes, the number is plus two three three five four four nine four seven two seven three. It is MTN mobile money account. The name on it is Precious Appear Gifting Ministry. Cecilia, God bless you. God bless you. If you are in South Africa, I can give you the details. If you want to donate to our foundation, or you want to bless the widows, you want to bless the poor people, our foundation, we will take it and we will gather it. When we get 10 bars of rice, we go and distribute to them. Madam Kate, God bless you. Whatever you are in Europe and you have second-hand clothing, you have anything that you don't want, that you want us to give to the orphans, please, our foundation, we welcome you. Just give it out. Whatever you are, let us know your address and your location. We will connect you to a door-to-door -door personnel and we will gather all and go and distribute to the less privileged people in the rural areas. And God Almighty will bless you. God Almighty will bless you. Shalom. Shalom.